Howdy, I'm Andy with Family History Fanatics, and today we have a viewer question. Can you use close matches for DNA triangulation? Now, I have several videos on this channel about DNA triangulation and how to do it on the internet everywhere about whether or not you can or should be using close matches for triangulation and, you know, even what is a close match. So let's answer this question. You can do anything you want but that doesn't mean it's gonna be a good idea. So let's review real quick what triangulation is. Triangulation is when you have three or more people that all match each other on the same segment. So it's not just that you all share DNA, you happen to share the exact same segment of DNA. You don't just have some amount that you share. So let's look at some different examples of how three people might share DNA all together and whether it is triangulation or even good triangulation for that matter. We'll start right here. We have A, who is the father of B, and they both match C. A and B match each other on that segment and A and B both match C on that segment. Sounds like triangulation, right? Well, no, this really isn't triangulation because one of your matches is the ancestor of the other match. In other words, any DNA that B got, they had to have gotten from A. And so really, all you're doing here is you are just comparing A to C. So you just have a match. You don't actually have triangulation because that B doesn't matter in this instance. So this is not a case of triangulation. So let's go to another close relationship, siblings. We have A and B who are siblings and they both match C. Now, of course, in this case, A and B match each other as well on this by their relationship. So is this triangulation? I would say that this is, it is triangulation, but it's really bad triangulation. And this is probably what people are thinking about when they say or they hear that you shouldn't use close relatives for triangulation. Now, A and B, they share a parent, as we just said, so why do I say this is bad triangulation? Well, because you're really just comparing C to the parent of A and B. Now, you are comparing it to A and B individually, but A and B got that segment from the exact same person, and it was their dad or their mom. Another example, again, somewhat close relationship. This now we have A and B are second cousins. And so they share a great grandparent or great grandparents. And C happens to match both of them. So A and B match by virtue of the relationship they have. And they both match C on the same segment. So is this triangulation? Is this good triangulation at this point? Are we still in this close relationship range? Well, I would still classify this really the same way that I classified the other one. This is sort of just bad triangulation. It's triangulation because we have three people all sharing the same segment that is on the same chromosome. However, just like with the sibling example, in this case, because A and B are second cousins, what we're really comparing is C to this great, great, or this great grandparent. And so you can see that this type of pattern would result anytime that you actually know the relationship of two of these three people you're really now just comparing it to one person. So you're doing it by a proxy of two people. So yeah, you do have triangulation there, but it's not really good triangulation. So what would good triangulation look like? Well, let's take an example here. We have three people and we don't know how they're related, A, B, and C. And you can see that A, B, and C are all sharing a segment with each other. So they have the same part of DNA on the same chromosome that they all share together, which indicates that they share a common ancestor. Well, in this case, I would actually call this good triangulation because if we went and did the research, we would find that all three of them can trace this back to a single most recent common ancestor. And this X, Y, and Z here basically represents varying amounts of generation. So for instance, this most recent common ancestor might be the third great grandparent of one. It might be the fourth great grandparent of the other, and it might be the fifth great grandparent of the other person. 
But in any case, they are all descended from this most recent common ancestor. All right, so let's start to work backwards then. What if we actually know how two of these are related to this most recent common ancestor and they triangulate with this third person? First off, does it automatically mean that this third person is descended from that most recent common ancestor of the other two? Not necessarily, because he could be up a generation or two. But this is still an example of good triangulation because while X, Y, and Z, as far as the number of generations in between them may change, all three of these people, again, are related to the most recent common ancestor. Let's go back to one of our other examples then. So if we have A and B are second cousins, they share a great grandparent, and they triangulate with C, meaning they share the same segment of DNA, how can this be good triangulation? Well, in this case, if C happens to be descended from this great grandparent as well, all three of these people are related to this most recent common ancestor all through three different lines. In other words, three children of this most recent common ancestor resulted in each one of these people. And that would be a good triangulation. So even though they're just second cousins, what some people may say is a close relationship, this is actually a good triangulation. Well, what about then if we have the siblings? Is there a way that we could make this good triangulation? In this case, the only relationship that would fit what I've been talking about good triangulation is if C was, let's say, a sibling of A or B or a nephew of A and B. All three of them share this most recent common ancestor but the difference here is that these close relationships, when you're talking about nephews, siblings, half-siblings, they can be determined from shared DNA and the triangulation is really not needed. So while you could say this is a good triangulation, it's a triangulation that's not needed because there's other information that you have, which is going to help to tell you what the relationship is. So in summary, you can't really determine if it is good triangulation until you determine the relationships that those people have between one another. You can have good triangulation, you have bad triangulation, and then you can have not triangulation. Like I said, with not triangulation, when you have one of your three matches that is actually a descendant of another one, that is not a triangulation because we can just ignore that person that is a descendant all of their DNA that is matching in this case would have come from their ancestor that's part of the triangulation match. So just to sum up with these close relationships, should you be using close relationships for your triangulation? Probably not, except for, you know, unknown relationships. For instance, if you're adopted and you have matches that are actually looking pretty close, you might be able to use triangulation to show that yes, these three share a great grandparent or something of that nature. However, for most of the triangulations you're going to do, you're not going to want to use you and a sibling or maybe even you and a first cousin. You're probably going to want to use second or third or fourth cousins or unknowns for that matter so that you can determine what groups have this triangulation. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to do triangulation, you can watch this video right up here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to join FHF Extra, you'll get even more videos each month.